All right, let's begin. Uh, CS4510, uh, LO3B. This is called the pumping lemma. So we've talked extensively about what is regular, what languages are regular. Let's talk about what languages are not regular. It's important we know about the non-regular languages simply because we're trying to create a computational model. We're trying to create a definition of an algorithm. And the uh, regular languages are are those described by DFAs and NFAs. So if we have examples of languages which are not regular, then we know that the NFA and the DFA, and now the regular expression and the GNFA, are not good models of a computation. They don't really do a good definition of what it means for an algorithm to be there. So intuitive, we understand their limitations because they're kind of finite in memory. And they're sort of, they can only keep track of a few things at a time, however many states they have. But there are certain things that they can't do. Consider the language a to the n, uh, b to the n. Uh, n is a number. This contains strings like uh, a, b, empty string, a, a, b, b, a, 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 b, 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 and so on. And notice that this is actually not equal to a star, b star. You could make an NFA or a DFA for a star, b star, or in fact a regular expression, because that's a regular expression right there. You could make an NFA, DFA for that by just keeping track of you're only seeing A's, and then if you see a B, you make sure you don't see any A's ever again. That's kind of easy to decide. Uh, but to keep track of the above one, A to the N, B to the N, N is a number, you have to know that you have exactly the number of A's that you saw is exactly the number of B's, and you have to keep track that every A, all the A's come before all the B's. But any DFA that must accept this must reject on a computation that looks like A to the N, B to the N plus 1, or maybe like A to the N plus 1, B to the N, right? So whatever the computation, you land on some state, the state that comes before, the state that comes after that, also have to not be accepting. So this actually does not have a DFA to decide it. And we intuitively can kind of think about that. Like any program I might make that reads left to right would have to keep track of a counter. If you're storing n, how much space does that take? How many bits does it take to store n? Log n. Log n bits. You keep a variable, it's going to take log n space. If you measure it that way. Later on, we'll formally decide space. But log n is greater than constant space. So certainly this, and it's like, well, can I do this without that? You could probably do this without that if you're allowed to jump to parts of the string, but you can't do that. The DFA is only allowed to lead left to right. And those two limitations combined force this language to be not regular. So uh, the pumping lemma really is just a sort of special case, a generalization, very useful, the pigeonhole principle. Everyone remember the pigeonhole principle? Pigeon. The pigeonhole principle. Uh, states, if you have uh, p plus 1 pigeons and p pigeonholes, some hole has um, greater than or equal to 1 pigeons in it. Now, the pigeonhole principle I see misstated all the time, even in papers, even in, on the internet, because the use of the pigeonhole principle is actually very different than the formal statement itself. Um, the, the pigeonhole principle doesn't say anything about randomness or distribution or how you can assign the pigeons to pigeonholes. But it, just for any possible way you could do it, if you have more pigeons than you have pigeonholes, then some hole has to have two pigeons in it. It doesn't say some hole has exactly two pigeons in it or anything like this. It could be the case that every pigeon is sharing one of the holes, and you have ten holes or something like this. They could all be crowded into one hole. You could have nine holes with zero pigeons and one hole with ten uh, pigeons in it, right? Something like this. Uh, but if there's more pigeons than holes, then th this, is, this is enforced, as long as each pigeon is assigned some hole. I want to stress that because I see this wrong all the time, even in 2050. The use of it is, 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 you could assume, like, in a worst case where you'd randomly assign the pigeons as sparse as possible, then uh, some pigeon, 
you would put one pigeon into each hole, and then the last pigeon hole would have to, you, know, you have one more pigeon left, you'd be forced to put it into some hole, something like this, right? Um, but that's not actually what it says. It's a very formal statement. Why does this matter? Well, a DFA is a finite object. Uh, it's a finite object. But infinite, a language, if it's infinite, uh, contains uh, arbitrarily long strings. Arbitrary, that's misspelled, long strings. Arbitrarily, yeah, something like that, right? A language is finite. If a language is finite, there's a longest string. If a language is infinite, there is no longest string. There's infinitely many strings of arbitrarily length, right? So uh, consider this language. It certainly has strings of arbitrary length, any, any number of length. Not infinite length, but arbitrary length, right? Uh, so consider the computation of a small DFA on a really, really long string. Consider a three-state DFA. Consider a uh, computation of a three-state DFA on string, let's say, like, A to the 1,000, B to the 1,000. What do you know about the computation of a small DFA on a long word? Some state is repeated. In the computation, some state is repeated. So um, let's instead of saying a, uh, instead of saying a string of length two thousand and a, and a DFA of size three, uh, a word of length uh, n will visit uh, uh, how many states? If you have a word of length n, how many states are visited? A word of length n will visit n states. Uh, it'll vi so almost. Two word of length two will visit how many states? Well, visit here means what? N plus one. Yes, we'll visit n plus one states. Right. Uh, if you so we we can generalize this. If you have a DFA of p states, <coughs> the computation of a word of length p some state is visited twice. By pigeonhole. The computation of a word of length p will visit p plus one states. If you count the beginning, you count the start state as well, right? Uh, it'll visit p plus one states, right? It'll exhaust all p states in the worst case and be forced to have one more symbol to read. So it will visit one of the states it's already visited before. So any computation of a D, if you have a word of length p and a DFA of p states, the computation of the p length string on the DFA of p states will uh, have some state visited twice in the computation. Now again, that's because a word of length n visits n plus 1 states. So a word of length p will visit p plus 1 states, which is sufficient for the pigeonhole principle if the DFA has p states, right? Now we can actually use this to uh, talk about um, like the structure of, uh, of what's going on here. If you have some DFA, you have some start state, OK? Some state is visited twice. Let's consider this state is visited twice. So something happens. You go from, you go, you see some strings x. Maybe there's some other things on the path, OK? There's, maybe even there's loops on that path. But you're at this state. And then from this state, you go, you go on your computation. You're doing whatever. And then you revisit here again, OK? And that is some string y. And then from string y, uh, 
you go to some accept state z, right? If the string is accepted, right? So if this is a start state, uh, and let's consider this state qi the one to be repeated. The word is really long, the DFA is really small, some state is repeated there, right? Um, if x, y, z is an L, where x, y, z, again, is a path in the DFA, or a word accepted by the language, right? Uh, then actually notice, if this state is repeated twice, wherever this y is, you can pump y. You take the loop-de-loop, -loop, by pigeonhole principle, you visited a state once. You visited a some state twice. There is a path from that state back to itself. Perhaps it's as simple as a self-loop. Perhaps it's a really complicated sequence of states, whatever it is. Y perhaps has many states on that path. But whatever it is, there's some path that begins at QI and ends again at QI in the computation x, y, z. Okay? You can take that string, cut it up, take the middle part, paste it in there several times, as many times as you want, and that string will still be accepted by the DFA. If you could accept x, y, z, let me make this clearer. Right. If you can take x, y, z from the start to the accept state, you can take x, z from the start to the accept state. You can take x, y, y, z from the start to the accept state. You can say x, y, 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 z start the accept state. x, y, 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 z to start the accept state. Right. If a language is regular and it's infinite, this only works for infinite languages. Right. You have long enough strings that can be pumped, you can take some of the strings in that language, you can cut out the middle and paste in copies of the middle of the string, and you'll still be in the language. So regular languages are those with a very simple pattern that'll have this. And we can actually use this um, to prove a language is not regular. Yeah? How do you know there's a path from my back to itself? By the pigeonhole principle. If the string chosen, so here's the thing, if x, y, z, is long enough, it can be pumped. It has to be long enough to be pumped. It's not true if you have a DFA of 10 states and you try to pump a string of length 2. That may not be true. It's not pumpable. What does long enough mean? We'll, we'll formalize that. It actually means length exactly the number of states or more. So p or more states. P, the length is p by pigeonhole. We, we ensure that. Recall that if a word has length p and we have p states, some state is visited twice. We call it state qi, and we call the path from qi back to itself y. y exists for the words of length p or more when there's p states. Question? I was just going to say, so that just means if you know one passing string that is length p or more, you know it's got a self-loop by the pigeon. Yes. Now, what in practice that is, does that actually mean? Maybe there's some state with the self loop or something. Uh, maybe the state, the loop. There's maybe there's ten states on this path of y, and maybe there's a loop on that itself. Something like this. Um, we will. We, we're not really concerned of like pumping a language. We're going to try and show a language is not pumpable. Why? What this says is if if L is regular. then L is pumpable. But we want the contrapositive of that. The contrapositive of that is if L is not pumpable, then L is not regular. So if we can show a language cannot be pumped, we can conclude a language is not regular. Right? This is the contrapositive. Remember the contrapositive? I'm doing 2050 this semester, so I'm always engaged with this stuff. Um, let's formalize, first off, what the pumping lemma says. Then we'll take the negation of it for it to mean as a proof strategy. Question so far on why the pumping lemma is correct? Right? Uh, for all s in L, with s greater than or equal to length p, um, uh, there is x, y, z such that uh, s is equal to x, y, z 
uh, implies that for all i, uh, x y to the i z is also an L. Right. This is sort of the uh, a formulation of what this means for a language to be pumpable. Now, when we take the neg the, the pumping lemma is always complicated because when you take the negation of it, uh, you have several nested quantifiers. So I'm going to instead of working too much with the definition of what is pumpable, I'm just going to give you a formula of what how to prove using the pumping lemma a language is not pumpable. So here's the pumping lemma formula. One, you're going to assume to the contrary uh, L is regular with pumping length P. Now, you're doing a pumping lemma proof for a generic P. P is a number of states assuming to the contrary this DFA has. When you, sh when you reach your contradiction, you're basically going to say that p is insufficient. You need more states. But because p is any number of states, there is no finite number of states that can decide this language. If you were to do a pumping lemma proof incorrectly for p equals 3, you, what you would have done is instead you would have proved that there is no DFA of three states. That does not prove that L is not regular. It just sh shows that there's no, none of the DFAs of exactly three states decide L. Right? So you have to keep... L, you have to keep pumping the pumping length p generic, right? Two, choose uh, s, which is an element of L, uh, with uh, the length of s being greater than or equal to p. So here, this is an existential statement. You get to choose a specific string in the language, choose one string in the language, and choose it lo uh, longer than p. You don't know what p is. That's OK. Turns out that's fine. You'll choose s as a function of p. You'll see it in the example. Um, for all cases of s is equal to x, y, z, uh, such that uh, x, y is less than or equal to p, and uh, y is the length of y is greater than zero. Now what this means is x, y, and z are three separate strings. You're going to break them up into all possible cases. For all cases, you get to choose s, but you don't get to choose the cases. But you do get to kind of choose the cases by choosing a good s. So you want it to be subject to uh, x, y is less than or equal to p, and y is greater than 0. Why do we want these conditions? Well, we want this condition y. Why should y be greater than 0? Because if y is 0, then you can just infinitely go over a 0 point. Yeah. Yeah, we want, if y is 0, there's, how many strings of length 0 are there? 1 is the empty string. So pumping y, we want to do x, y to the i, right? So y to the i is going to be epsilon to the i, which is going to be, not, it's not going to pump anything. We're not going to get a contradiction. Why do we want x, y less than equal to p? This one's a little tricky. p, we want it to be the end. We want it to be the first occurrence of this loop, right? We don't know where it occurs. Why can it, the, there could be many loops, but we know that we want to, the first possible loop to occur, and we'll denote that as y. So there could be loops, but we want we know that by the pigeonhole principle, the end of y is guaranteed. Uh, before the end of y, a loop must occur, right? We just then denote x as whatever comes before and z that ever comes after. This case, this condition, all it does is simply. Um, Ensure what we call x is x, what we call y is y, what we call z is z. That's all that ensures, right? Double check everything. Right. For each case, choose i does not equal 1, and show uh, that x, y to the i, z is not an element of L. So there exists an i. Some, remember, it's for all i, x, y to the i, z is an L. So you, when you take the negation, you simply get to choose an i. And sometimes you get to choose i is 2, i is 0. It's easy. Choose i, and then conclude that x, y to the i, z is not an L. And then for 
Uh, five, conclude proof. Conclude um, L is not regular. No DFA was sufficient. Right. That's the formula. That's the easiest way to do a pumping lemma proof. You might have no proof formulas. You may like proof by induction, proof by contradiction, all these kinds of things. The proof, the pumping lemma proof is kind of a monotonous proof strategy. It's going to be easy if you follow the formula for each one. Right. Any questions on the correctness of the formula before we get into some examples and applying it? Let's just do some examples. We want to prove that a to the n, b to the n is not regular. But for simplicity, because we're going to use lots of letters, I'm actually going to prove 0 to the n, 1 to the n. So we're going to prove not a to the n, b to the n, just 0 to the n, 1 to the n, which is the same language. We prove this L, uh, uh, we prove L is not regular. Assume to the contrary. Uh, L is regular with pumping length T. Choose S is equal to, we only have two conditions on the choice of S. It needs to be in the language. It needs to be greater than p. The length of s needs to be greater than p. What's a good choice of s? Name any string in the language that is greater than or equal to p. If you haven't seen an example yet, this is going to be a little challenge. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's obviously in the language and obviously has length greater than or equal to p. So we know that s is an l. Check. We know that the length of s is greater than or equal to p. Check. The length of s is greater than or equal to is 2p, in fact. So it's greater than or equal to p. Um, uh, for all cases, uh, s is equal to x, y, z, we have x is equal to some 0 to the a, y is equal to some 0 to the b, and then z is equal to 0 to the p minus a minus b, 1 to the p. Uh, subject to, to uh, a plus b is less than or equal to p, and uh, b is greater than 0. This is the, the challenge. This is the hard part. Basically, I'm enumerating many cases as one case. Notice that we chose a great value of s here. We chose an s. If the number of states of the DFA is p, we chose a string long enough so that only the zeros are going to be p. There's going to be p zeros. Then there's going to be p1s. So the string is going to be exhausted in the number of zeros first, right? So we know whatever x, y, x and y are only going to be zeros then. If we know that x, y, the length of x and the length, length of y must be less than or equal to p, then we know that x and y can only be uh, zeros. y cannot contain any ones, and x cannot contain any ones either, right? Think about string math. If you have 0 to the p, 0 to the, 0 to the p, 1 to the p, it's going to look like 0, 0, 1, 1. It's going to look like that. Think of x as this part, y as this part, and z as this part. Right? x concatenated with y concatenated with z is x, y, z, which is 0 to the p, 1 to the p. But if this is length p, and we know that x, y is less than or equal to p, we know that y can't contain a single 1, because the first 1 is the p plus 1th character. Right? So x, y can't contain any p's. Uh, so we only have one case, which is that x is equal to 0 to the a, y is equal to 0 to the b, and z is p to the a minus b, p to the a, 0 to the p minus a, p minus a minus b, 1 to the p. What uh, i should we choose? Choose i is equal to what? Give me a number that's not 1. 2. Uh, then x, y squared z is equal to x, y, y, z, which is equal to, well, we're simply going to concatenate them. 0 to the a, 0 to the b, 0 to the b, 0 to the p minus a minus b, 1 to the p, right? Now, 
when we equal the, when we work this back out, we're going to get 0 to the p plus b, 1 to the p. Since b is greater than 0, then uh, x, y squared, z is not an l. And uh, l is not regular. That's a full, complete pumping lemma proof, right? You should have questions or comments on that one, on the structure of that one, right? A lot is being hidden by the mechanics of the proof, but maybe you could still see what's going on. By choosing an S, if we have P states of a DFA, let's say you have 10 states, choose a string of 0 to the 10, 1 to the 10, right? So some state is going to be repeated just in the 0 block. You pump that up, you now have more zeros than 1s, and you're not in the language anymore, right? That B, that plus B that we got, is literally the, what we pumped up. We, we did the loop-de-loop, -loop, but then we literally took the loop-de-loop -loop exactly one more time. That means we increased the number of zeros without changing the number of ones. Because a regular language allows you to copy and paste a substring into it, you can pump up the string. Well, pumping the string for a long enough string destroys the structure of the string. Right. It's a pumping limit proof. Another one that's kind of learned by example. Any questions on this proof? Let's do another. Let's do pal let's do even length palindromes. WWR, W is in sigma star. WR is the reversal of W. So this is a string concatenate, concatenated with itself. This is strings that are concatenated with their own reversal. It's even length palindromes, right? Uh, it doesn't contain zero. It does contain the empty string and so on. Uh, we want to prove this language is not regular. Intuitively, we should see it's not regular at all, because if you're reading the string, you have to memorize the string to out, then output it again, right? So it's kind of like, it should obviously, like I couldn't think of a way to do that in constant space. And it's read only left move model of the DFA. Uh, you could probably do it with the stack, though, right? Um, we'll talk about that later. But now we want to prove it's not regular. There is no DFA for it. So we may formulaically apply the pumping lemma. Assume to the contrary, L is regular, L2 is regular with pumping length p, right? Choose, let's choose a bad s on purpose, so we, just so we see what's going on, so we see the example. Let's choose s is going to be equal to um, uh, 0 to the p minus 1, 1, 1, 0 to the p minus 1, OK? So we have p minus 1 zeros, followed by 1, followed by 1, followed by p minus 1 zeros. Uh, this is obviously in an even length palindrome, so we see that s is an L, check, and we see that s, uh, the length of s is greater than or equal to p, check, right? And in fact, the length of s is what? It's 2p, right? Uh, for all cases, x, y, z, uh, for all cases, we have two cases. We have that either y contains a 1 or doesn't contain a 1. So we have that. Uh, x is equal to 0 to the a, y is equal to 0 to the b, and z is equal to uh, p, uh, 0 to the p minus 1 minus a minus b, 1, 1, 0 to the p minus 1. Uh, if we're going to do this case, choose i is equal to what? Give me, an, give me a pumped value of, uh, that will break this uh, string. Two. Two. Then uh, x, y, y, z is going to be equal to 0 to the p minus 1 plus b, 1, 1, 0 to the p minus 1. 
Now, since a b is greater than 0, this is not an even palindrome. That would be an even palindrome only if uh, b was 0, right? Uh, case 2, uh, x is equal to 0 to the p minus 1. We'll say p minus uh, k. Uh, y is going to be equal to 0 to the k, p minus 1 minus k, k, 0 to the k, 1. And then z is going to be equal to 1, 0 to the p minus 1. So notice that since the fact that xy is less than or equal to p, we are allowed one case here where x contains a single 1, right? So let's pump down. Let's choose. We'll say, uh, yeah, so choose uh, i is equal to 0. So we're going to say x, y to the 0, z is equal to x, z, which is equal to 0 to the p minus k, uh, z, z, which is going to be 1, 0 to the p minus 1. Right? And k could be 0 or more. k could be 1 or more. It doesn't really matter. Excuse me. It's k minus 1, right? Since xz has an odd number of 1s, it is not an even length palindrome. Since we chose an i for all cases, uh, it, L2 is not regular. Now, any questions on this proof? I chose a bad S on purpose here. I chose S that was not, like when you choose a good S, you usually want the first block of it to be all the same symbol, so you only have one case. Here I specifically chose it to P minus 1. What happens if I, would, if I chose 0 to the P, 1, 1, 0 to the P? I wouldn't have had two cases. This whole case I wouldn't have to talk about or explain. When you want to choose a good S, it's, it, it, you, when you choose a good S, the rest of the proof becomes really easy, right? Here I'm choosing a bad S, so I have two cases. Sometimes you could choose such a bad S that you have six cases, and the proof would be incorrect if you miss a case, if you forget a case. So choosing a good S, you, sometimes you want to do the proof on paper before turning it in, right? Of course, every proof should be done three times. Um, we could choose a better S, right? What's a better value of S here? Yeah, any, any number of value of s with more zeros. Zero to the p. As long as there's more than p zeros, it would have been one case, where x and y are all zeros. So let's do a similar language uh, and pump that one. So we'll do uh, L3. W, W, W is in sigma star. Notice that this does not equal sigma, sigma star. Sigma star, sigma star, right? This is not all words concatenated with themselves. This is specifically the subset of sigma, sigma, sigma star, sigma star, which is words concatenated, the same words concatenated with itself. So this contains the empty string, A, B, A, B, A, 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 B, A, A, B, right, and so on, things like that. So it's all words concatenated exactly and only with themselves. And L3 is not regular. Turns out L3 is a harder language than the other two for reasons we will we'll describe soon. But it's also it's not regular by a similar pumping proof. Assume to the contrary. I'm going to go a little faster. Show you how smooth things can be. Assume to the contrary. Uh, L3 is regular with pumping length. P. Choose. Now we want a bunch of zeros in the front, so choosing a good S is difficult. can be difficult. You want an S such that there's a little, few cases as possible, and even the slightest perturbance of the string will bring it out of the language. The string I'm going to do is choose S is equal to zero to the p one, uh, zero to the p one. 
right? That's barely in the language. There are some examples of strings that can be pumped, and you don't want that. 0, 1 to the 2n is an element of that language, but that can be pumped. You could paste certain substrings of that into itself and not violate the condition, right? This is a bad choice. You don't want something like that. That, with the foresight I have, I'll tell you is a good choice, right? Here's another bad one, 1 to the 2 to the n. That's a bad choice, because if you pump that string, you're still, an, you'll still, you're still the form www, right? So there's many bad choices of s. Um, uh, what are our cases? What are, why is this a good one? Notice that s is an element of l, great. And the length of s is greater than or equal to p, great. So we can apply the pumping lemma. For all cases, uh, s is equal to x, y, z. We have x is equal to 0 to the a y is equal to 0 to the b, and z is equal to 0 to the p minus a minus b, 1, 0 to the p, 1. Uh, subject to uh, a plus b is less, than equal, is less than equal to p. And b is greater than 0, right? For x, y less than p. Um, choose i is equal to 2, right? If i equals 2, then uh, x, y, y, z is going to be equal to uh, 0 to the a, 0 to the b, 0 to the b, uh, 0 to the p minus a minus b, 1, 0 to the p, 1, which is equal to 0 to the p plus b, 1, 0 to the p, 1. Now split the string in half. in half. First half ends with 0. Second half ends with 1. So x, y, y, z is not in L. And L is not regular. Split the string in half. As you inflate this part, you've pumped this part up. The, you've moved the 1 to the other half of the string, right? The 1 is shifted to the other half. So wherever you make the cut, before it was here, now you've inflated it. Maybe something like that, right? The middle has now moved this way by inflating the first half. So we see uh, we've pumped it, and it's still not in the language. Right? Questions on this proof? You get good at them. You do a couple of them. You see the pattern. You're like, well, obviously, click. It's done. Something to remember. Well, let's do one more. Let's do a unary language. Unary languages just seem a little more difficult to pump because you don't get to exploit any symmetrical structure in them. You only get to exploit numerical structure. Remember all the languages that we did that were uh, regular, right? We did like 1 to the a n plus b, where n is some number and a and b are constant. These were regular because you could make cycles of that length. But it may be surprising to you, you can't do any other arithmetic. Let L be, <coughs> I move the camera, okay. Let L be 1 to the n squared, n is a number. We're going to prove L is not regular. 1 to the n squared is strings of length perfect squares. So this contains the empty string, 1, uh, 1 to the 4. Squared, 2 squared, 1 to the 9, and so on, right? So it contains strings whose lengths are uh, perfect squares. So 4, 9, 16, 25, et cetera, right? And we, I can, we can prove that uh, L is not regular. Proving a unary language is actually much simpler. Assume to the contrary. Uh, L is regular. 
with pumping length p. Uh, choose s is what? One to the p squared. When you have a unary language, usually choosing s is too easy because there's another. You don't have any options, right? It's just the function of p. The length is some function, some number function. You just choose that evaluate it at p. Uh, notice that s is an l. Check and that the length of s is greater than or equal to p. Check because p squared is greater than p. p again being a number of states is more than zero. In fact, right? p is one or more. Um, uh, for all cases, uh, x, s is equal to x, y, z, we have x is equal to 0 to the a, excuse me, 1 to the a, y is equal to 1 to the b, and z is going to be equal to what? What's the length of z? p squared minus a minus b. Yep, p squared minus a minus b. Z is whatever is left after you take off X and Y. Uh, choose I is equal to 2. Then uh, X, Y, Y, Z is going to be equal to 1 to the P, 1 to the A, 1 to the B, 1 to the B, 1 to the P squared minus A minus B, which is equal to 1 to the P squared plus B. Right? Uh, and again, these are cases that are subject to uh, that b is greater than 0 and uh, a plus b is less than or equal to p, right? We want to prove this string p squared plus b is not in the language. So it takes a little bit of arithmetic. Uh, since um, a plus b is less than or equal to p, then uh, b is less than or equal to p. Agree? a plus b being less than or equal to p, b is less than or equal to p. These are all whole numbers. They're lengths of things. They're natural numbers. p is some number of states. b is some length of the thing that's being pumped, right? Uh, again, x, y, z, b, b is length of y. It must be less than the number of states. Um, then p squared plus b is less than or equal to p squared plus p. Agree? That's strictly less than or equal to p squared plus p plus p plus 1. Now, I added a p plus 1 for free. That's certainly a positive number. What is p squared plus p plus p plus 1? p plus 1 squared. Yeah. It's p squared plus 2p plus 1, which is equal to p plus 1 squared. So we know from here that p squared plus b is strictly less than, not less than or equal to, strictly less than p plus 1 squared. Right? And since a b is greater than 0, p squared is strictly less than p squared plus b. You agree? Why are we doing this? Well, consider this, the, the two strings, the ones we chose in S. The length of 1 to the p squared is just p squared. We know that the length of p squared plus b is strictly greater than p squared. Right? And we know that p squared plus b is strictly less than p plus 1 squared. What is our contradiction? p squared plus b cannot be a square itself. Yeah, p squared plus b lies in between two consecutive squares. p squared, the next string in the language, is p plus 1 squared. Right? 1, 4, 9, 25. It relies in between two of them. So you pumped p squared just a little bit, but not enough to get to the next square. That's our, that's, that's our contradiction. We got in between two squares. You know, In some sense, NFAs can do like linear math. But they can't do this quadratic math stuff, right? The, 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 the strings grow farther apart than the, NF, than the size of the NFA can account for. So you could just pump one small string into the language, and into, in, you could pump a string in between two consecutive strings, and you reach a contradiction. There does not exist a string uh, in that language. So L 
is not regular. QED. Questions on that proof? Unary proof a little interesting. Perhaps you pers uh, believe you could generalize that proof to n cubed, n to the fourth, 2 to the n, things like this. Anything that you can, like, when you do this plus b, you're adding, like, a linear amount to something. Anything you can, like, add a linear amount to, but you don't get enough to get to the next biggest one. Something like this, right? 2 to the n, uh, n factorial, whatever. Things like this, right? Any questions? Awesome.